Hi, and welcome back to the Media Zone here in the DevNet Zone at Cisco Live Europe 2023. My name is Ryan Rose, and I'm the Director of Learning and Development here with our DevNet team. I'm joined by Venkat Krishnamurthy. Really excited to have you here. Yes, it's great to be here. VP of Engineering. Venkat, thank you so much for joining us. Um, maybe we can start our interview by having you tell our audience a little bit more about yourself and the products that you work with here at Cisco. Sure. Uh, first of all, it's great to be here. Excellent. Okay. Uh, I love hanging around the DevNet Zone. It's one of the coolest places, always and ever. Venkat, the check is in the mail, man. I'll tell you what. <laughs> it, we are always happy to have people in the DevNet Zone, and so it's so great to have you with yeah. us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I am uh, I'm part of the Cisco networking organization and I work on automation software products. Uh, we build switches, routers, all the software for switches, routers, um, and the software that controls the switches and routers, and that's where I spend uh, all of my time. Uh, some of the products that I, I work with are <clears throat> on the data center side, it's uh, what, what used to be known as DCNM, now we call it Nexus Dashboard Fabric Controller. That's right. And then we have the APIC, which is the um, ACI's controller, the Application uh, Centric Interface Controller, Infrastructure uh, Controller. And then on the service provider side, I, I work with EPNM, NSO, uh, the new one, Crosswork Network Controller, VEI, um, so I work with the engineers and the product managers. We, we love to build stuff that uh, people like to use and to manage products. Uh, you know, uh, Venkat, this is one of the best parts about having a person like yourself join us here in the Media Zone is we're able to share with our audience more about the very products that you're working on. One of them that you mentioned is, is somewhat new, which is the Crosswork Network Controller. That's right. um, uh, it's, as you know, this is a team I work with. Mm -hmm. I work with many of the teams that you just <laughs> yes. listed out. Yes. Maybe you could tell us more about, and it wouldn't be Cisco if we didn't abbreviate it, yes. CNC. Yes, so CNC is Crosswork Network Controller. It's, uh, it's an SDN controller for uh, SR-based network. SR is segment routing. That's right. Okay. So what it does, it allows you to provision uh, layer two, layer three VPN services and the transport policies of SR policies. It allows you to the ability to visualize the services on a point by point basis across uh, your entire network, uh, large scale networks, and we've had some really large scale uh, customers out there. And it allows you to monitor them, okay? Mm -hmm. First, you, we provision, we visualize, we monitor, and then we can assure them as well. So it, it allows our customers uh, a lot of ways that they can continue to automate as well as get visibility into what their networks are. Um, it's, it's one of the great products. It's, 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 it's tracking really, really well. Um, and we are very excited to hear feedback from some of our customers, and it's been... Uh, quite positive. We are very excited about it. Oh, that's excellent. You know, there's one thing that you brought up too when you were giving your introduction. Mm -hmm. You were talking about crosswork. Mm -hmm. You were talking about NSO. Yes. And of course, yes. those two things yes. are connected. Oh, yes. Um, and maybe you could go into a little bit about how do you use NSO mm -hmm. in crosswork? So, it's very simple. So when you have a crosswork network, I talked about how the crosswork network controllers does provisioning. Mm -hmm. We use NSO to provision. NSO is the provisioning engine that's at the heart of crosswork that we use to uh, do policies, uh, SR policies, as well as the transport, as well as the VPN services, okay? So why NSO? Uh, number one is it allows us to do multi-vendor. Okay, uh, it has got great capability that we can do multi-vendor uh, provision. Okay, and the second one, which is close to uh, my heart, is it's got a significant developer ecosystem. I mean, mm. you can see uh, some of the stuff at the share experience. I mean, there are lots of people who use the developer ecosystem that we have built, and we want to leverage that. And last but not least, we can also extend the capability. So we pre-package into CNC uh, some of the function packs that you can do the service provisioning with. Mm. But you could use NSO 
And because we have NSO, you can extend those function packs to something very custom to what the customer's use cases are and that the customers can do, the, the CX organization can do. And this is something, it's a standard practice. So we wanted to tap into that. We saw that and we said, we're not going to build a provisioning engine just for CNC, and we're going to go get NSO to do that. So. Oh, that's awesome. And by the way, it's great to see your passion on this subject, <laughs> because again, it's people don't realize it's not just ones and zeros, it's blood, sweat, and tears oh, that get you is, there. it is, it is. I can, I, can, I can absolutely say that. It's, 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 it's like, we've been working on this for the last three years, and it's very, very exciting to see uh, some of the initial customer deployments and some of the customers at scale. Yes, um, yes. So there are press releases on, on what we do with Dish. Uh, so it's, it's really, really exciting to see some of that feedback come in. And that's where engineers get super excited. Yeah, um, Venkat, speaking of things that are exciting, yeah. your team is with us in the DevNet zone yes. to share yes, your experience are. with yes, us right are. on the other side of this wall. Yes, they are. Um, now, you all have a video that's playing over there of some of the things that you've been talking about here. Um, you know, for our audience, we're going to cut to that video now because it's something that's super cool and I think you all are going to love seeing this. Uh, with that, let's, let's cut over to that video. Melanie is a level three operator managing multimedia traffic delivery at Super Bowl games, which requires a robust solution that can adapt to constraints such as low latency and disjointness. To achieve that, we introduced Tree Segment Identifier, a new automated multicast multimedia traffic delivery capability in Cisco's Crosswork Network Controller. TreeSID is an STN controller-based approach that builds point-to-multipoint trees using point-to-multipoint segment routing policies. Here, Cisco's segment routing path computation element, the SRPCE, acts as controller to build a multicast tree dynamically using predefined constraints, such as combinations of IGP, metric, and affinity. Thus, Melanie can deploy multiple tree SID paths concurrently and stream and replicate the same multimedia content with the desired constraints. If there are failures in the network, the path simply switches to another, which may be visualized using Crosswork Network Controller. Melanie can instantly get a good sense of how this service is performing by checking out the History tab, which displays the traffic trend and the changes that have occurred in the path. Plus, by using API resources available at developer.cisco.com, she can achieve seamless integration with business systems. The new IP Multicast TreeSID feature offers a controller-friendly architecture to enjoy operational agility, ease of visualization, resilience to failures, plus all the benefits of automation. TreeSID coupled with Crosswork Network Controller is a true game changer. That was awesome. <laughs> Uh, again, that video has been playing on the other side of this wall here, and it has been just super cool yeah. to see. Yes. But, you know, obviously a big part of that yeah. is tree Sid. Mm -hmm. Venkat, I know that you have a very lengthy breakdown, yes, a, yes. a solid definition. Yes, I'm looking at it. Yep. On tree sit. <laughs> Maybe you can uh, explain that, and I know that it's, it's, it's important to be technical yes. to a technical audience, so right. it'd be great to go through that. And is that a part of CNC? Okay. Um, so, tree sit. Tree sit. So, SID is basically segment identifier. Yep. Tree sit is a tree building solution. Mm -hmm. that uses SRPC, the Segment Routing Path Computation Engine. Yep. Okay? And the PCEP protocol, okay? To calculate point to multi-point uh, tree using SR policies. Okay? That's what tree is. Mm -hmm. That's just a fancy way of saying it's a multicast tree. Yeah. So point to multi-point is how we do multicast replication. See, all of this media and everything that we are building, it will finally go out. When, it go, when, when media goes out, we always use multicast to distribute media. Mm. So, so what happens? So you, if you use segment routing uh, and you use tree set as a way to build a multicast tree, you can use the exact same data plane that <clears throat> we use for unicast. You don't need additional control plane protocols. You don't need to do, uh, so it, it, it works very seamlessly. So what does CNC do with it, okay? So TreeSid is, is out there. It's in iOS XR. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's supported on multiple platforms. So what do we do? We actually, as an SDN controller, we can discover 
the three said um, uh, parts, mm -hmm. okay, across the board. We can discover it across the elements and we can overlay it on the network topology that we have. And in that network topology, we can show, so, so what happens is when there is congestion, okay, and we have SR and we have traffic engineering. I talked about traffic engineering. Yeah. So in traffic engineering, what we can do is we can change the path. We can put a tactical T policy. The path will change yep. because there is a congestion. Now, the cool part is with CNC, you can see over a period of time what are the path changes and how did it shift. So these are visibility that our customers can now actually have. Yeah. And when you are a, as it shows in that video, when you are someone who's working with these and you want to know, hey, wait, what happened? And then it's right there. And then you can go back and you can look at it. So it's, it's, it's we're very excited about it. Uh, and our customers are, are really, really uh, looking for this. So we're really excited about this. Oh, that's awesome. Um, Venkat, we've been talking a lot about CNC, obviously, and I always like making sure that we're able to also provide a little bit more information, like, especially to our developer community, often we'll get questions about things like, what type of external tools or external items can a developer automate with CNC? Okay. Uh, so we can do all kinds of automation with, uh, with CNC. We, we can do it with ServiceNow. Uh, we can do with WebEx Teams. We can do PagerDuty. So these are some of the things that we've actually worked through. Um, so, so as you know, CNC looks at all the network elements, mm -hmm. and from the network elements come faults, alarms, all of this. So, what our customers want is they want them to go to their northbound systems. They have their own northbound systems, and they want them to go there. The other thing that our customers want is they want, for example, service now. So, you can take a CNC uh, event, create a service now ticket, and that service now ticket can actually turn around using APIs, you can turn around and do a network configuration on, uh, on CNC. So oh, wow. a customer who is used to, their operators are trained on ServiceNow, mm -hmm. they don't have to come back to CNC at all to take care of their ticket. Oh. We can do that, and we can do that with APIs. In fact, there was a DevNet session yesterday. It was a lightning talk. Uh, there was a DevNet session yesterday that actually showed this particular use case. Okay. Oh, wow. And then there is going to be another opportunity on Thursday where you can do a, where uh, customers can be part of that and they can do a workshop on doing closed to remediation using APIs. Right Again, on. super cool. It, it combines multiple parts of CNC, it combines change automation, it combines health insights, and it does a closed loop. So basically what you can do is whenever you create a service, and with every service, you have some specific KPIs that you want to monitor. Yeah. Okay. And that varies. Like what? What? And some are constant. There are some things that vary. Yeah. So what you can do with uh, with health insights is you can create those KPIs as soon as the service is provisioned, and you can put a change automation playbook that mm -hmm. actually creates those KPIs. So as soon as you create the service, you got the KPIs, and you can you can you can get that. And this is all through APIs that we can do it. So we do have. You know, quite a lot of integration. We we really care about this, and we know that we have this. Remember, I, I talked about NSO's developer community. Yeah. We want to leverage that, and we want that to be able to automate. Now, for the people who are the clicky gooey types, which I'm not, uh, <laughs> <laughs> right? I'm not. Uh, but you know, we got that. But. People like me, I, am, I, I consider myself a developer, and people like me, we, we love this API stuff. Well, I'm, I'm really <laughs> glad, and you know, uh, maybe, maybe that kind of leads us to a final question, which is, you know, we are doing so much more with APIs. We are doing so much more for developers. Mm. What can we do more from our side, from the Cisco side, mm. for that developer community? We're awesome, man. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think we're doing great. Where, 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 where do we keep building? Of course, of course. Um, one of the things that we constantly hear is uh, API consistency. Yes. Um, so, because when developers uh, do their job, they expect an API to work yeah. consistently across multiple releases. And this is, this is a typical issue where we change uh, the APIs across uh, releases, um, it's, it's, it's something that we can definitely do better. Uh, in fact, there are things that we now have like API insights. So we are, we are using that and it, it tells us where, uh, where we are lacking in terms of consistency and we 
we ought to do better and we can do better. On yeah. This. Well, honestly, though, I, I, I can't say enough how excited I have been having you on this show. Uh, you have brought so much energy and so much excitement around everything from NSO to Crosswork to our APIs. Venkat, thank you so much for joining us. All right, thank you. Right on. And yep. for you at home, thank you again for joining us here and being a part of our DevNet community virtually. Uh, and remember, whether you're just starting, whether you're interested in uh, NSO or uh, crosswork, go to developer.cisco.com to find everything from learning labs to sandboxes to code. And again, we can't wait to see what you create with DevNet. Thank you so much.